So looking at the texture mining problem more closely, we see that the problem is similar to general data mining, except that we'll be focusing more on texture data. And we're going to have texture mining algorithms to help us to turn text data into actionable knowledge that we can use uh, in real world, especially for decision making or for completing uh, whatever tasks that require text data to support. Uh, because in general, in many real world problems of data mining, we also tend to have other kinds of data that are non-textual. So a more general picture would be to include non-text data as well. And for this reason, we might be concerned with joint mining of text and non-text data. And so in this course, we're going to focus more on text mining, but we're going to also touch uh, how to to join the analysis of both text data and non-text data. With this problem definition, we can now look at the landscape of the topics in uh, text mining and analytics. Now, this slide shows the process of generating text data in more detail. More specifically, a human sensor or human observer would look at the world from some perspective. Now, different people would be looking at the the world from different angles and they will pay attention to different things. The same person at different time might also pay attention to a uh, different aspect of the uh, observed um, world. And so the human sensor would perceive the world from some perspective and the human uh, the sensor would then form a view of the world and that can be called the observed world. Of course this would be different from the real world because of the perspective that the uh, person has taken. This can often be biased also. Now, the observable world can be uh, represented as, for example, entity relation graphs or more, uh, in a more general way, um, using knowledge representation language. But in general, this is basically what a, a person has in mind about the world and we don't really know what exactly it looks like of course but then the human would express what the uh, person has observed using a natural language such as English and the result is text data of course the person could have used a different language to express uh, what he or she has observed in that case we might have text data of uh, mixed languages or different languages. So the main goal of text mining is actually to revert this process of generating text data. And we hope to be able to uncover some uh, aspect in this process. And so specifically, we can think about the um, mining, for example, knowledge about the language and that means by looking at text data in English, we may be able to discover something about English, some usage of English, some patterns of English. So this is one type of mining problems where the result is some knowledge about the language which may be useful in various ways. If you look at the picture, uh, we can also then mine knowledge about the observed world and so this has much to do with mining the content of text data. And we're going to look at what the text data are about and then try to uh, get the essence of it or uh, extracting high quality information about uh, a particular aspect of the world that we are interested in. For example, everything that has been said about a particular person or particular entity. And this can be regarded as mining content uh, to describe the observed world uh, in the user's mind or in the person's mind. If you look further, then you can also um, imagine we can mine knowledge about this observer himself or herself. So this has also to do with using text data to infer the, some properties of this person and these properties could include the mood of the person or sentiment of the person 
And note that uh, we distinguish the observed world from the person because text data can describe uh, what the person has observed in an objective way, but the description can be also subjective with sentiment. And so in general, you can imagine the text data would contain some factual descriptions of the world plus some subjective comments. So that's why it's also possible to uh, do text mining to mine knowledge about the observer. And finally, if you look at the picture to the left side of this picture, then you can see we can certainly also say something about the real world, right? So and indeed, we can uh, do text mining to infer other real world variables. And this is often called a predictive analytics. And we want to predict the, the value of certain interesting variables. So this picture basically uh, covered multiple types of knowledge that we can mine from text in general. Uh, when we infer other real world variables, we could also use some of the results from mining text data as intermediate results to help the prediction. For example, after we mine the content of text data, we might generate some summary of content. And that summary could be then used uh, to help us predict the variables of the real world. Now, of course, uh, this is uh, still generated from the original text data. But I want to emphasize here that uh, often the processing of text data to generate some features that can help the prediction is very important. And that's why here we show that uh, the results of uh, some other mining tasks, including mining the content of text data and mining knowledge about the observer can all be very helpful for prediction. In fact, when we have uh, non-text data, we could also use the non-text data to help prediction. And of course, it depends on the problem. Uh, in general, non-text data uh, can be very important for such prediction tasks. For example, if you want to predict the stocks, uh, stock prices, or changes of stock prices based on discussion in the news articles or in social media, then this is an example of using text data to predict some uh, other real-world variables. Now, in this case, obviously, the historical stock price data would be very important for this prediction. And so that's an example of non-text data that would be uh, very useful uh, for um, the prediction. And we can combine both kinds of data to, to make the prediction. Now, non-text data can be also useful for analyzing text by supplying context. When we look at the text data alone, we'll be mostly looking at the content and or opinions expressed in text. But text data generally have also context associated. So for example, the time, the location um, of the, uh, that are associated with the text data. And these are uh, useful context information. And the context that can provide interesting angles for analyzing text data. For example, we might partition text data into different time periods because of the availability of time. Now we can analyze text data in each time period and then make a comparison. Similarly, we can partition text data based on locations or any metadata that's associated to form interesting comparison scenarios. So in this sense, uh, non-text data can actually provide uh, interesting angles or perspectives for text analysis and it can help us make a uh, context-sensitive analysis of content, or the language usage, or the uh, uh, opinions about the, the observer or the authors of text data. We could analyze the sentiment in different contexts. So this is a fairly general landscape of the topics in text mining and analytics. In this course, we're going to selectively cover some of those topics. We actually hope to cover uh, most of these uh, general topics. First, we're going to cover uh, 
uh, natural language processing very briefly because this has to do with understanding text data and this determines uh, how we can represent text data for text mining. Second, we're going to talk about uh, how to mine word associations from text data. And word associations uh, is a form of use for lexical knowledge about a language. Third, we're going to talk about the topic mining and analysis. And this is only one way to analyze content of text, but it's a very useful way of analyzing content. It's also one of the most uh, useful techniques in text mining. And then we're going to talk about the uh, opinion mining and sentiment analysis. So this can be uh, regarded as one example of mining knowledge about the observer. And finally, we're going to cover uh, a text-based prediction uh, problems where we try to predict some real-world variable based on text data. So this uh, slide also serves as a roadmap for uh, this course. And we're going to use this as an outline for the topics that we'll cover in the rest of this course. Mm -hmm.